Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here. I'm Ken Roper with Pickens County. I'm very excited to be here along with several of these volunteers and Pickens County employees to talk about what we think is a unique approach to our litter problem. We, we see a litter problem not only in Pickens County, but statewide. I've had an opportunity through my work to travel over the last couple of weeks a little bit, and I, I've seen the problem in Columbia, I've seen the problem in Rock Hill, I've seen the problem in Charleston. But I think we have a unique approach to solving the problem here in Pickens County. And I'm, I'm, I'm honored to stand beside these public servants, these volunteers, and to talk about uh, a few of the details of how we intend to approach this problem, and solve this problem locally. But it starts with the County Council. Pickens County Council started just a few uh, uh, months back looking at this problem and uh, they tasked staff with, with certain responsibilities. They wanted us to enhance and protect our unique nature and they wanted us to create a, a culture of public service. And to me, when they started saying things like that, vision sort of that, like that, and then they also put their budget authority behind it by creating two new litter positions we we're lucky to have those litter guys with us here. Uh, Officer Lee and Officer Chapman are here this morning with us. Uh, they created those two new positions, used hard-earned tax dollars to create those, outfitted them with the equipment and the trucks they need to do their job. Council set the vision and they also put their money where their mouth was. And so now the responsibility turns to me and to my staff to make sure we're implementing that vision. So I wanna thank County Council, but what we're doing today is the implementation of their vision and so I want to talk about that. We're announcing this morning the Pickens Proud program, a comprehensive approach to a litter-free community. In days gone by, Pickens County has identified litter as a problem and we've tried to do things like encourage voluntary cleanups. We created a five on, fri five on Friday social media campaign which I participated in. Uh, we did team up and clean up events where we even shut down certain parts of county government and retask county workers to picking up trash one day. Uh, we did that, I think, three different times. We tried to do public education. We tried to do several of those things, but they have been sort of one-off processes. And so now what we're trying to do is looking at it from a comprehensive approach. And I want to talk about what that, the background of that is. Uh, when we look at litter, 80% of the studies tell us that litter is intentional meaning people roll down their window and say, I'm gonna throw this out. They do it on purpose, it's not accidental, 80% of the time. 76% of roadway litter originates from motorists and pedestrians. Probably doesn't surprise you, but three quarters of the, of the uh, trash we have on our highways are coming from motorists and or pedestrians, not blowing in from some other source. 21% of roadway litter comes from uncovered loads. So when you see trucks going down the road big trucks, small trucks, commercial vehicles, private vehicles, 21% uh, of our roadway litter comes from things blowing out of the back of those trucks. And so we know that from the studies. And then 15% of litter is directly affected by the environment. In other words, what's going on around may encourage litter uh, as well. You may see that if there's a place where litter is, people think, oh, that's where the litter goes. So more litter leads to more litter. On the other hand, if we have a litter-free community, the benefits of having that litter-free community would be, number one, it's been shown in study after study that it deters criminal activity. A clean community is a safer community. It leads to a healthier, a friendlier, a safer community for all of us. It strengthens our small towns. A litter-free small town is gonna to be more attractive to investment, more attractive to people moving in, and it makes an impact. It makes an impact on visitors when they see a positive, lasting change in a community, a litter-free community, they're gonna be more likely to spend their tourism dollars here, they're gonna be more likely to stay a little longer here, uh, and then it's gonna improve all of our quality of life. So with that being said, what we have spent some time doing as a county staff is not just looking at what can we do with one event, what can we do by writing one ticket, but instead, what can we do to address this entire problem and address it in multifaceted ways. And that's why we have what we call the comprehensive approach to the Pickens Proud program. And I'm gonna step through each of these individually. So uh, you'll, you'll know that there's, there's a few of these, but there is an end in sight. This entire circle 
is what we hope to accomplish in the Pickens Proud program. And I'll start with keeping Pickens County beautiful. We're, we're pleased and delighted that through Keep America Beautiful, uh, the Keep South Carolina Beautiful program, Pickens County has been granted an affiliate of the Keep America Beautiful program. Actually, the, 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 the award is right back here. You want to move, Oscar. Uh, Officer Chapman, thank you. But the award's back there where we were created an official affiliate of Keep America Beautiful. We have uh, invigorated volunteers, volunteers that have engaged with us since we've started that program, volunteers that have remained with us from the old uh, beautification committee. Uh, we're honored to have some of those volunteers here with us this morning that have been doing the hard work out there, educating the public, and also doing litter pickups on their own. So we're gonna continue to use that as an umbrella organization that helps us with, with all of these uh, litter issues. We're also uh, looking at more enforcement. Our officers are being trained, our officers are being engaged in this process. And as a matter of fact, as a part of our uh, enforcement efforts for uncovered loads, for illegal dumping, for littering, those types of things, I uh, met with our chief magistrate. Now, it would be inappropriate for me to talk with our chief judicial officer in Pickens County about any particular case. And so I did not talk to the magistrate about any particular case, but I did tell the magistrate's office to expect more work from us. I told him that we're going to be writing more and more tickets because I'm gonna be counting on these guys to do it. The culture in Pickens County in the past has been, this is not something the county government did, but with the vision that county council has set, and with these guys that I know are committed to the program, we're gonna see more tickets and more people being brought in front of our local magistrates. So if you're one of this 80% that's doing intentional litter, look out for these guys because they're going to be there to write you a ticket and take you in front of a judge. We also are proud to announce uh, a companion to our FixingCountyRoads.com uh, portal. If you go to FixingCountyRoads.com, you can report a pothole or a sign that's down. Well, now we have a companion program through our website where you can report litter and code enforcement issues. So if you see a street that's particularly bad, you can go on our website, you can use your mobile device, you can take a picture of the litter, it'll geolocate that picture, and you can submit it to our uh, litter officers and they'll be able to follow up, coordinate with litter groups, volunteer groups, county staff, uh, and try to mitigate that litter and also find out who's putting it there. So there's an online reporting tool on our website. We'll push out more information about that so that the public will know. Uh, once in the system, code enforcement, environmental enforcement work, uh, workers can then uh, deal with the complaint and enter it into our InterGov program. So that way all sides of county government can see this litter, uh, this litter problem. You can track along and see when we consider the problem solved. So uh, be looking for more information on our code enforcement and litter reporting tool. The Adopt a Highway program, and I'm gonna go on a little bit of a rant here, uh, and I apologize about that, but uh, we have the strong feeling as a county staff that we can coordinate and run the voluntary Adopt a Highway program better than the South Carolina Department of Transportation is doing. We think they can do better than what they're doing. We think they can do better at SCDOT in picking up litter on our roadways. They have basically stopped in Pickens County years they funded a position, a part-time position that helped us do uh, litter pickup, but they have stopped that and said they're going to do it themselves. Well, I haven't caught them doing it yet. Now, the local DOT guys in the local office, Michael Clark will tell you, they work hard. They work with us hand in glove. We work with them cooperatively uh, day after day, and Michael Clark will tell you that we really appreciate those hardworking public servants with DOT here in our local office. But the regional folks, the state folks, we can't get a return on an email. We are offering to take over this program for them because we can run it better without an additional person, without an additional dollar of tax revenue, and we can't get them to respond to an email. So if you know someone with SCDOT, not the local guys who we love and, and appreciate, but the regional folks, I think our closest SCDOT Commissioner, I think her office is over in Lawrence. It's certainly not Pickens County, but if you've got a way to get in touch with her or get in touch with somebody at State DOT and tell them, hey, Pickens County's here and we're ready to help, I would appreciate any help the public can give me on that. Uh, 
we can give them a return phone call, we can start getting a little more optimistic about them helping us fix our roads and our liver problem. That being said, we're anxious to take over the Adopt the Highway program and turn it into something else uh, that we can all be proud of here in Kings County. We are very pleased, on the other hand, with another part of, <coughs> of our government. The Solicitor's Office, the 13th Circuit Solicitor's Office, which is, covers Greenville and Pickens County, has agreed with us and has, uh, we've entered into a contract with them. We no longer have access to the inmates like we used to, to do litter pickup on the side of the road. But the folks in pretrial intervention that are trying to do community service in order to not end up having to go to court on minor criminal offenses, the solicitor's office has now agreed, and we have a, a, a document that I've signed uh, setting out that agreement, to cooperate with us and to allow our litter officers to supervise people doing community service on our roadsides to work off their community service hours and to avoid criminal prosecution on minor offenses. So we're very pleased. Solicitor Walt Wilkins and his staff at the PTI office have agreed to work with us in that way. And we're anxious to see the folks doing that community service on our roads. Our solid waste division, uh, we have eight recycling centers and, and a landfill. We have a lot of employees that spend a lot of time making sure that trash from our communities is put in the proper place. Uh, but you're going to see changes in our solid waste program led by the director, Steve Rains. He's already instituted several reforms, which we're very proud of uh, and made good, uh, good progress there. But some things that we still are dealing with uh, that we're going to have to figure out a new way to address. And one is the number of tires that are being dumped at our facility. Now, we have places at all of our satellite recycling centers for tires to go. But we suspect it's not just mom and pop with a tire that maybe wore out on the tire swing. Instead, it might be folks that are selling tires to people for a living. Uh, they have a garage or a, a tire shop, and they're supposed to dispose of their tires in a certain way. But a, another way they could do is to just bring them to our recycling center and let us deal with them. Well, I just want to put folks on notice that we're coming up with a program in order to catch people doing that prosecute them to the fullest extent of the law. Another thing that we see happening is contractors, good local contractors, folks that we love and appreciate doing work for uh, homeowners, kitchen remodels, adding on a garage, that sort of thing. They are supposed to, when they have charged you a fee for the service they're providing, the demolition debris that they have, they're supposed to bring it back to our main landfill and they're supposed to come across the scales of it properly. They're charging you, the taxpayer, they're supposed to also pay the fee for disposal of those items. Now, if they don't do that and they just deliver the stuff and dump it in our recycling centers, which are designed for, again, mom and pop to dispose of their mattresses and their old worn out furniture, uh, they're making you, the taxpayer, pay twice. You're paying <coughs> not only for the service they're providing, you're also paying taxes to require Director Raines' folks to dispose of their waste at your cost, at the taxpayer's expense. So I want to let you know and I want to let the folks doing, that have been doing that for a few years know that those days are over. Uh, we are going to collaborate within the county government. If we see your commercial vehicle dumping at our recycling stations that are meant for the homeowners, uh, we're going to check to see if you've got some building permits in Pickens County and we're going to talk about that. So we're going to look at ways of, of making our different parts of county government collaborate to cut down on the illegal dumping. If you're a commercial uh, uh, remodeler or, or building constructor, uh, take your debris to the landfill. That's where it's supposed to go. So we're going to start looking at that internally. And our solid waste division is going to help us with that. We're also going to do positive things there as well, though. Uh, a new program where we're going to have QR codes on our dumpsters. You can scan them with your mobile phone and it'll give you advice on what's supposed to go in that dumpster. What's the appropriate type of plastic we're able to sell now? What's the appropriate type of cardboard? How you're supposed to uh, make your recyclables more attractive to that secondary market so we can keep recycling going. We're also going to set up an online resource library. This goes along with the QR codes on the dumpsters. Uh, the online resource library is going to show you citizens who want to set up private uh, trash pickup events. If your church or social group 
want to do a trash pickup event, it's going to give you some safety tips, it's going to give you resources, it's going to help you uh, organize your volunteer cleanups, and we're going to push out information that uh, where our volunteer group can also send us follow-up reports to help this all work collaboratively between the county government. Uh, we're going to do an educational marketing campaign. Uh, I know Brooke Vanderpool with Parks, Recreation, and Tourism is down here, and she helps coordinate our Keep Pickens County Beautiful uh, program. Uh, we're going to also use our public information manager, Jamie Burns, is going to help us with this as well. Continuing to educate the public on the folks that are helping us fix this problem, and also folks that are making this problem worse, uh, and then also pushing out information about best practices and the way that we ought to dispose of our trash. Ultimately, the responsibility for trash is not the inmates, it's not uh, volunteer groups, it's not our solid waste department, it's not our roads and bridges department. The ultimate responsibility for littering on our roads and littering on our trails and littering in our community is you and me. We are the folks, the citizens, that'll solve this problem. We're going to do our part with county government, but I also want to encourage the citizens to address this as something that is your problem. It's all of our problem, and we have to work together on that. So when you uh, are, are talking to your children, when you are talking to your parents, please emphasize that we need to address this litter program together. Uh, the only way this is gonna get better is all of us working together. So we have citizens groups that are gonna help us do that. We're gonna continue to coordinate with those citizens groups. And if any citizen group out there wants to take on the litter pickup, needs help from us, please contact us to help you organize those types of pickups. We have another program that we're starting here that we call the STOP program. Uh, sadly, and you'll see this in, in a lot of our communities where uh, perhaps a homeowner because of illness, because of advanced age, or perhaps because of a mental illness that they're dealing with, uh, are not keeping their property up like they should. Something that might surprise the public to know that we haven't done in an intentional way in the past is uh, referring those folks to the appropriate state agency. So our STOP program, Solution to Our Problem Properties Task Force, we're going to start when we see a, a homeowner uh, that perhaps is in the situation of being a vulnerable adult or a homeowner that might be dealing with a health issue. We're gonna start referring those folks to the appropriate state agency. We're gonna start making it our business to make sure that Department of Social Services Department of Mental Health, those sorts of state aid agencies, taxpayer funded agencies, know when we see those problems in our community. We're gonna to try to be helpful. We're gonna to try to do everything we can uh, to help fix those problems. But folks are not just throwing trash in their yard uh, for no reason. There's a reason they're doing it. We're gonna to try to help if we can address the root cause of those things. So that's another one of our uh, initiatives. And then a, a initiative that I think is unique that I am very excited about uh, to help us address this is we have a situation frequently where limitations in my job, limitations in what I can do because I work for the government, I can't just go on private property, I can't start committing the county to maintaining private property, limitations like that on my job or uh, Michael Clark the Roads and Bridges sees this quite frequently where there'll be a, a, a condition that's not sightly, an unsightly condition out on the roadways, but it's off of our right of way. And so he's limited in what he can do with taxpayer dollars. He can't go off his right of way and, and, and do cleanups on those areas. But I still have county employees telling me all the time that they're willing to do that sort of thing. And so in thinking about this and in talking with our local United Way, the United Way has agreed with us, and we're very appreciative of the United Way, to coordinate this program I'm excited to announce our public, our public Employee Service Corps. So if you work for the county, if you work for a city, if you work for the school district, and you feel that calling to get involved with making our community a cleaner place, a safer place, outside of your regular work hours, if you feel like your call to being a public servant goes beyond what you do from eight to five, United Way is going to set up an online portal where you as a public employee can go on and sign up for specific programs, specific projects where we public servants outside of our normal work hours can go and address some of these problems. 
going to be run by the United Way. It's not going to be run by the county because let's be honest, if I decided or if Michael Clark decided that we were going to get volunteers to clean up after hours, that's just another word for work, right? So we're very excited that the United Way is going to coordinate this and, and really appreciate Pickens County United Way for buying into this vision of our public servants being public servants even if they're not at work. So we're really excited about that. Uh, the last slide here is really uh, put on there by staff as a way of teasing me, uh, something that I've said again and again and again. If not us, who's going to fix this problem? And if we're not going to do it now, when's it going to get fixed? Uh, I was listening to one of our council members the other night, Councilman Wilson from Dacusville area. We were talking about a particularly difficult issue that we're dealing with. How are we going to solve that particularly difficult issue? And he said facetiously, well, let's just wait till some future day when some brighter folks who care more about their community decide to solve this problem. That's the way we'll fix it. And we all laughed about it and I've thought about it since. It fits with my philosophy of we're not going to fix it now. If we are not going to fix it now, then our litter pro problem is never going to get better. We have to do it together. So if not us, then who? If not now, then when? Together, let's be Pickens proud. Be glad to answer any questions you might have.